Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. In this week's video we're going to talk about external tables in Snowflake, what they are and why you would use them. For example, a lot of my customers store data outside of Snowflake and on a cloud storage platform provider such as Amazon S3 or Google Cloud Storage. And so with this data sitting in a data lake outside of Snowflake, invariably users need to be able to access that data and run SQL queries over the top of it. To do that, Snowflake has a piece of functionality called external tables. And what that does, it enables schema on read. So when the query is executed against those data files, the schema is applied at runtime. So that really works well within Snowflake itself. And we're going to cover how you set those up, what that looks like, and how you can even auto refresh data. However, and recently in the last couple of weeks, there's been a really good post on the Snowflake website, as well as in the uh, in some other tech websites as well, talking about an open source table format, which was developed by Netflix in conjunction with Apple as well. And that provides a table format that you can use independently outside of Snowflake, almost standardizing the way those data files in your data lake storage can be used across your entire organization. So if you're interested in that, and that sounds like something that you need and a challenge that your organization has, stay till the end of this video. And that's when I'll take you through what those are and give you those links as well. So before we get into external tables, let's just have a quick reminder what an external stage is in Snowflake. So if your data files are already staged in a supported cloud location, such as GCS or Amazon S3, you can skip staging the file locally within Snowflake and load directly from those external locations. You just need to supply the URLs for those particular locations, as well as the access credentials if the location is protected, which invariably it is. So when you create an external stage in Snowflake, you can think of that as a pointer to that particular cloud storage location. It encapsulates the URL as well as the security credentials you need to access that data. And that means you can point your external stage at any of the main cloud providers, regardless of what platform your Snowflake account runs on. Now, when you create an external stage in Snowflake, that actually creates an object within a selected schema that you can then reference when loading data. External tables. So contained within your external stage, you can have external tables. These objects will metadata, which tell Snowflake where to locate the data files which relate to the table. So imagine you've got a table in Snowflake that could actually just be a pointer to a bunch of files within an external storage location, which are all contained within your external stage. And so when you query that particular table, it looks and feels like a table in Snowflake, but really it's just directing the queries back across outside of Snowflake to your external cloud storage location. This approach allows data to sit outside of Snowflake, but it appears to the end user like the data resides within Snowflake. So what's the advantage of that? Well, it can be really advantageous if you've got a large amount of data sitting in a data lake in cloud storage, but the value of a large proportion of it is yet to be determined. So you wouldn't necessarily want to bring all of that data into Snowflake and do the heavy lifting and shifting of it if there was little business value in there or if the value was unknown. But the big trade-off here is performance. So data is not then stored into its um, native compressed Merkle partition format, as we discussed a little earlier. It's just sitting as files on the external cloud storage. So Snowflake can't utilize the micro partitions and the associated statistics to get that same level of performance. So that's the big trade-off to, to be aware of here. Let's look at external tables in a little bit more detail. So again, it's really handy if you wanna have read-only queries over tables, which sit out on an external cloud storage provider. You may wanna query archived or historical cloud data, or just run ad hoc queries over files to see if there's any business value in them. So what does this look like? So we've got our external stage out here for our files sitting on our data lake. We've got Snowflake. We can specify an external table, which just points to a series of files in our data lake. So the benefits of this is you can query and access all data within Snowflake using this mechanism. Alternatively, you can also set up external tables with auto refresh. So if your files in your data lake are frequently uh, being updated, you can then set up a process which includes a notification and a notification service which recognizes that the files have changed. That then updates metadata, which tells Snowflake that the underlying data has changed, which in turn refreshes the, the metadata for your external table. And there's a small maintenance overhead charge for manually refreshing the external table metadata. 
you can use an alter external table refresh command, which we'll see in the live demo shortly. Let's have a quick look at how external tables work in Snowflake and how you set them up. So the first thing we're going to do is create or replace a database called ext underscore tables. Then we're going to create a file format. We've used a similar one before for CSVs. And I just paused the video while I entered my AWS key ID and secret key to create my external name stage to my S3 folder master and snowflake environment noting that I've used the file format we specified above as well. I'm then going to go and I'm going to unload some data to that S3 external stage from the customer table in the Snowflake sample data database. I'm going to force it overwrite and include the header as part of that. So that command is completed successfully. You can see it unloaded 150,000 records. If I list the files in my external stage, I can see in that folder I've got four files unloaded. And let's just quickly confirm that fact by heading over to my AWS console into S3. There's my same four files I've created there. Now we're ready to create our external stage. And this is the syntax I'm going to use. I've got create replace external table, external underscore customer underscore data. I've had to list my field names out as well as assigning them a data type specifically. So Snowflake knows how to interpret that incoming data and structure it as a table. This is what's known as schema on read because these are just sitting there as individual files, CSV files, out of my S3 location, which I've specified here. That's my external stage. I'm using my file format, my CSV format here as well. And also I've commented this out at the moment, but just to show you where that would go, if you do want this data to refresh automatically, using Snowflake Compute Credits in the background, you just uncomment this line and include that as part of the create table statement. Don't forget you can also manually refresh that data which I'll show you in a second as well. So if I now execute that create table command, that's now created. You would just interact with it then like any other table in Snowflake. So I've got select star from external customer data. In this case, don't forget the performance trade-off here is that data is not in Snowflake, so it's going out to the S3 bucket. It's querying those files on the fly and applying the schema on read. Here's my data coming back in the format that I would expect it to come in. If you do want to refresh that data manually, you could schedule a job or run this on an ad hoc basis. This is alter external table. You give it the table name and the refresh keyword after that. So that's external tables in Snowflake. Now external tables are very useful in those scenarios when you need to cater for many different file formats that reside within your data lake, such as all of those ones that I've got listed on the screen, which are supported by Snowflake. And when you create those files using Snowflake, the scheme is then applied on read, which gives you a great degree of flexibility. But what happens if the same files need to be accessed outside of Snowflake? In this case, the external table can't be leveraged in the same way. And this is where something called the table format comes into play. A table format contains the metadata for a table ahead of time, which allows client applications reading that data to understand the table format. And therefore, you can use that data consistently across the organization. So the bottom line here is if you need to store data on a data lake outside of Snowflake and you need to ensure it's used consistently, then obviously in this case, a table format is hugely advantageous because regardless of the user or the application querying that one set of data in the data lake, everybody's using it in a consistent way to start with. And so let's talk about a technology called Apache Iceberg. Now this initially came about to address data consistency issues, the ones I've just described, but in Hive tables specifically within the Apache ecosystem. And it really aimed to ensure that data stored in Parquet or Orc or Avro format wasn't corrupted or misinterpreted when used by many users across lots of different applications. Now it was developed by Netflix and Apple to meet this particular need, this challenge, and made open source in 2018. And this allows the data to appear as a regular SQL table. And Iceberg also delivered more fine-grained data partitioning and better schema evolution functionality in addition to atomic consistency. So even though it was made open source in 2018, why am I talking about it today? Well, firstly, there's this article published on uh, February the 1st, a few days ago, and mentioning Snowflake and AWS warm up to Apache Iceberg. And the point here is that it calls out some of the particular key features of Iceberg itself, but also it references a great blog post that I read by James Malone 
on the Snowflake website. And this came up a few days earlier, back in January this year. And the reason why James wrote this uh, this really insightful piece is because table formats, and specifically Apache Iceberg, is now supported in private preview by Snowflake. And so when you do have that data stored outside of Snowflake in a data lake, you can now use Apache Iceberg to be able to access that data. So not only are you able to query that data outside of, of Snowflake, you can also use Snowflake and you can create an external table using this syntax here, where you specify in the table format equal to iceberg. So essentially it's looking for that metadata that describes the table, which other applications outside of Snowflake are using. Everybody then across the organization is able to use a common storage pattern across the entire business. So I hope you found that useful and insightful. You should understand now how to use external tables in Snowflake and also what options you've got when you need to then access that same data that resides out of Snowflake using these uh, different tools and open source formats. I'll include the links to the websites in the description of the video below. Thanks very much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.